My name is Morgan Duvall. I'm a doctor of physical therapy, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about osteoarthritis, or OA. Now, OA is something that will happen to most of us if we live long enough and spend enough time exerting force and pressure on our joints. What OA is, is basically the degeneration of the cartilage in the joint space. So that's the space between two bones that come together to form a joint. For example, in your knee, you have your tibia, which is the biggest bone in your lower leg, and your femur, which is the big bone in your upper leg. They come together at the knee joint, which bends, right? And there's cartilage in between uh, the top of the tibia and the bottom of the femur that as it gets um, degraded over time can lead to osteoarthritis. Now you may have heard um, OA referred to as bone on bone. I don't love that term just because it can be a little bit scary, but it is somewhat descriptive, right? Because as the cartilage degenerates, the bones come together closer and closer until they touch. And that's what causes that stiffness, that pain, that loss of function that happens with OA. Now, if you have OA, exercise is probably the last thing you want to do because your joints hurt. But it's very, very important. It causes joints to compress and release. It brings blood flow to the joints, oxygen and nutrients to the cartilage. And all of this can prolong function and joint longevity. There was a 2009 study published, I've cited it in the description of this video, that found that uh, provided there was no trauma, exercise at moderate intensity does not exacerbate OA, and in fact, there is an increase in function and a decrease in pain in those with OA who exercise. Now, there's no one exercise that's best for osteoarthritis. Generally, low-impact cardiovascular exercise, such as walking, cycling, cross-country skiing, swimming, anything like that is going to be nice and gentle on the joint, inspire movement in the joint, but not be um, too intense or provide so much force to the joint that it exacerbates pain. So I would recommend certainly starting with exercises like those. I'd recommend exercising three to five days a week. If you have a lot of pain, you should probably start with a low, um, a low duration of exercise, possibly five or 10 minutes. And then as you start to get a little bit more comfortable with the movement, you can slowly increase that time frame. I do have a few exercises for you today, uh, specifically for your hip and for your knee. These are great stretches to start increasing the range of motion of the hip and the knee. So if you do have relatively severe arthritis and walking, swimming, cycling sounds kind of out of the question for you, these exercises are a great place to start. Okay, let's start with the knee. I'll begin sitting in a chair. And basically what I want to do here is increase the range of motion of the knee joint. So there's two exercises that I'll do, focusing on the two basic motions of the knee, which are flexion and extension. For a knee extension, you'll sit up nice and tall, engage your core, and then very gently kick your knee all the way straight, really squeeze your quadricep muscle so that you feel it getting kind of hard, and then gently release the knee back down. All right, so you engage your core, sit tall, straighten the legs, squeeze that quadricep muscle, and then slowly bring it back down. So this exercise is to improve your knee's ability to extend, to straighten. Squeezing the quadricep brings blood flow, nutrients, oxygen, all of that good stuff I talked about earlier to the knee joint, and can help decrease the pain and improve the function. All right, so that's knee extension. The second stretch I have for you is a knee flexion stretch. Once again, sitting in a chair nice and tall, engage your core. You'll actually pick your knee up. You can take your hands underneath your, um, your upper leg, and kind of pull your leg up towards your chest. If this is enough for you and this already feels kind of intense, this is a great place to start. If you like a little bit of a deeper knee stretch, bring your hands on the front of your shin bone and gently pull your knee in towards your body. Now just make sure, check it to see if you're good. If you're not good, you can back off, right? If you have any pain exacerbation, if this is really uncomfortable, just don't pull as hard, lighten it up a little bit. This should feel like a stretch, but it should not feel like a pain exacerbation. You can hold this stretch for about 10 seconds, then gently release and do a couple more repetitions. I would recommend eight to 10 repetitions of every exercise. And then release. Okay, so those are two stretches to improve your knee flexibility. To improve your hip flexibility, you're actually going to stand up. I'm going to get rid of my chair so it's out of the way. And the hip also flexes and extends. 
It has a couple other motions as well at the hip joint, but generally the motions that really hurt with an arthritic, arthritic hip are hip flexion and hip extension. So we're going to focus on those, try to loosen up those ranges of motion and prepare you for that cardiovascular exercise that we talked about earlier, okay? So the first uh, stretch we're going to do is a hip extension stretch. I'll be stretching my left hip, this one right here closest to the camera. You'll go up to a wall, bring your opposite leg forwards and the leg that you're trying to stretch backwards. Now here's what's really important, you guys. I do not want you to stick out your butt here because then you're really stretching your low back and not stretching your hip. So engage your core, point your tailbone down to the ground and really squeeze your glute so that um, your hip flexor gets a bit of a stretch. You should feel a stretch through this front part of your hip right here, okay? Maintain that engagement. We call this a posterior pelvic tilt. Squeeze your booty, push your hip forward, and then you can put your hands on the wall in front of you and gently bend your front knee, feeling more and more of a hip flexor stretch through the front of the hip. If this is kind of intense, you can come in and out of it a little bit, maybe take a couple repetitions out of hip extension, and then into hip extension. Just try to warm up into that range of motion and really start to get the joint moving. Okay, again, eight to 10 repetitions, and then very gently as you're ready, you can shake it out, okay? The last stretch we're gonna talk about here is a hip flexion stretch, and I really like this one because it also works your balance. So if you know that your balance is a little bit funky, I recommend doing this next to a wall so that you can place a hand on the wall and make sure you don't fall over while you're doing this stretch. That I do not recommend. Again, I'll be stretching my left hip. Similar to the knee flexion stretch, you'll start by bringing your hands underneath your upper leg. Now this might be enough for you, and see how this is a balance already? I really have to work my opposite leg to balance, I have to engage my glutes. So this is a great exercise for multiple reasons. You're kind of getting like a little extra balance work while you're stretching your hip. If the balance is a little bit funky, you can put one hand on the wall, or you can turn and just lean your back to the wall. I'm gonna switch which hip I'm stretching just so it makes sense for the video and you can see. All right, so you can lean your back against the wall for balance if need be. You'll pick up your leg underneath that upper leg with your hands. This might be enough for you. If it is, you can stay right here. If you feel as though you could go a little bit deeper, bring your hands in front of your knee and really try to pull your knee up into your chest. Noticing here that you're getting a really nice hip flexion stretch. If you feel like you can, maybe lift yourself away from the wall, try to balance. If that's too much, come back to the wall, no big deal. Hold for about 10 seconds, maybe 15, and then release. And come on back into it. You'll hold for another set, 10 or 15 seconds, and then release. So all of these stretches I recommend performing 8 to 10 repetitions on your arthritic joint before moving into cardiovascular exercise, just again to get that joint moving, to get the fluids moving to the joint. They always say motion is lotion. I think it's a funny term, but in this case, it really is true. Motion is lotion for an arthritic joint. And if you can find a way to warm your joints up and tolerate some exercise, I do think that you are going to have more longevity, higher function in your arthritic joints. Thank you so much for watching.